right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up and use NVIDIA's Shadow Play in order to use it to record video games and also to stream them and all of the different things that that entails. So, in order to fiddle around with and use Shadow Play, you're going to need to wander off down here in the corner of your desktop, click this little arrow, and find the little NVIDIA logo, right click and be like, yes, open the GeForce experience so it can do stuff to my face. And then this window should pop up, it might open up to the list of games that are on your computer. This is just the section where NVIDIA lets you optimize your in-game settings using um, most used settings from other users who have the same um, hardware specs as you do. Um, it currently wants me to fiddle around with Blade and Soul, which I just finished installing, and Don't Starve Together, which probably doesn't need to be optimized because it could literally run on a toaster. But this panel will also let you look at, like, are you... Do you have the latest drivers installed? You can check for updates. You can see the specifications of your rig. I do know that this is not correct, though, because I do know that the processor I have in my computer runs at 2.8 right now, but this says it runs at 2.6 gigahertz, and I can actually bump that up to 3.4 if I overclock it a smidge. But, you know, it's, it's close enough for what you want to use it for. You can also mess around with and interface with your Shield products if you have any of those in this uh, panel right here. But mostly what we want to do is we want to go to our Preferences panel, where all of this stuff is. These are some of your other settings for the GeForce experience and other programs running on your computer. And we want to go down here to Shadow Play, and this is one half of the settings that you can use to mess around with, well, Shadow Play. And the other half of them are accessed by clicking on this Shadow Play button up here, which opens up this handy-dandy pop-up, which allows you to turn on NVIDIA Shadow Play by clicking on this power button, and that's how you change, like, the recording mode. Um, if you want to use Shadow Time at all, which is basically a background recording that constantly records either a minute or up to 20 minutes of gameplay in the background, and then you can click a button to save it if anything cool happens. Otherwise, it'll just throw all that away in the event that you're one of those folks that really likes putting together highlight clips for the YouTubes. And then this lets you control your quality, but we're gonna get to all of that stuff in a minute. We're gonna just start with this settings panel right here, and this stuff is going to let you uh, mess around with your webcam, so I can put a webcam on here, and I activate it by placing it in one of the corners of my screen. I'm gonna say I like it in the upper right-hand corner because I'm just, uh, I'm cool like that. And then I can also put a status indicator in, let's put it in the other corner up here. This is basically like a little recording light, and this will tell you if um, Shadowplay is recording or not, so you can tell while you're in the game. And any of these features, when you select them, can be turned off by just clicking the off button, and then you can put it somewhere else later if you want to turn it back on another time. And then, just in case you want to be a part of the PC Master Race, so that you can tell how fast your game is going, so that you can tell if you can actually record 60 frames per second, you can activate an FPS counter, and I'm going to dump that in the lower left-hand corner. And the last thing up here for overlays is you can click this box, and that'll allow Shadowplay to record the, um, the monitor or your desktop so that you can do things like this handy-dandy tutorial. Personally, I'm recording this with a capture card, so I'm cheating a little bit, but that's a story for another day. Now down here, you can set your microphone to continuous or to push to talk, and then you can rebind any of your key bindings however you like down here. Um, personally, I leave these alone, and if I was going to use this on the fly to stream or record, I actually have it bound to my headset through a couple of macros to click these hotkeys for me. And then down here, this is just where you save your recordings. I just left them saved by default to my videos folder, and the temporary folder where my um, background recording done by Shadow Time is kept is just in my app data folder. But you can change these by just clicking on this dot 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 button. It'll open up a window and you can move stuff around. Um, this apparently is recording to a giant file full of registry stuff. 
which I, I'm not even going to look at that right now. That's confusing my brain parts. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop back open that shadow play window. And currently I've got the mode set to manual recording. That's the type of recording where you only just record when you press a button and nothing else happens. You can also set it to manual and shadow time. Now, shadow time, like I was saying before, is a recording that records in the background the last minute to 20 minutes, however you set it up by clicking on this window and dragging this slider to the right. The right side over here is 20 minutes and it can be a little laggy when I pull over the little button. The button doesn't like to behave itself, but I can record up to 20 minutes at 19.5 gigs of space taken up for that 20 minutes, or I can just leave it at my one minute default, which if you're doing a lot of clips, if you're doing like a highlight reel, one minute is probably way more than enough time. Like most um, highlight clips are like a few seconds long, like 20 to 30 seconds. That's like twice the speed or twice the time that you really need. But I'm not so big on that, so I'm actually going to disable that for the moment. And later we'll go into how you use the Twitch streaming feature and what kind of settings go into that so that you don't um, piss them off because there is a limit to how fast they want you to be streaming because it overloads their network and they get kind of spicy with you. So don't do that, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to set this to just manual recording. You could also set this to just shadow time recording. And I'm going to mess with my quality. You've got low, medium, high, high quality is going to be 720p, um, 1080p um, at 60 FPS. I'm actually going to go into the manual quality control and control it that way because I understand the magical world of bit rates and quality settings. Now you got some options here. This thing can actually record up to 4K quality if you are actually setting your monitor to 4K quality. But just as a piece of um, recommendation, just because you set something to record at say 4K and you're actually running at 1080p, you can sometimes end up having to re-edit that footage because there's a giant black bar around the whole thing because it can record up to 4K, but it's really just recording the small window that you already see. So I'm actually going to dial that back down to 1080p HD. I'm going to leave the frame rate at 60 because I'm one of the delicious PC master race. Oh yes, um, all PC master racers, you now have my permission to rub your cheeks in glory. Um, here's the rule with 60 FPS, and that's why I left over here the, um, the FPS counter turned on on my screen. If you're playing a game that is either locked off at 30 or it can't run at a full 60, then setting it to a frame rate of 60 is not actually going to record 60. It's, it just means it can record up to 60 before it starts throwing away data. But if you're actually only getting 40 frames per second, then recording at 60 is actually going to look choppier than if you just dialed it back and recorded at 30 instead. So just keep that in mind. That's the general rule. Now, for quality, I recommend recording at about 25k to 35k, which is about all the quality that you're really going to get out of a 1080p video. And yes, I have done quality checking and testing, and it really doesn't matter, even on my end. And that doesn't even take into account the fact that if you upload it to some place like YouTube, YouTube is going to compress it to death because a standard YouTube video's bitrate is about at 8K or 8 megabits per second. And that's massively compressed compared to, say, 30K. And these are in kilobits per second, just in case anyone's curious. And the whole lowdown on bitrate just means that um, the bigger the bitrate, the bigger the highway of beautiful visual data that all of these videos can drive on. So the bigger the highway, the fancier the cars that can fit on it, and the more of them. And the lower, the poopier the quality, down to like potato level, down here at like 10. And you know, this actually does better than basic um, YouTube if you go all the way down to 10, so that's not too bad. And that's what I'm gonna leave it at. Uh, actually, I might just dial it back to 25 just because um, Shadow Play is not the most uh, efficient encoder. So I'll leave it at 25k. And then audio, we want to have it both. Um, I'm not actually using a microphone on this computer, so I'll just have it to be the in-game audio only. 
And you don't really get a lot of quality controls on the audio bit rates, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And now if I wanted to, I could boot up a game and I could start recording it right now. But I'm going to wait and show you guys how to stream first, and then we'll do a demo real fast. So the last thing that we can do here is we can select Twitch streaming. Sadly, it doesn't offer you the ability to stream to other places like Hitbox yet, but uh, I don't actually know it. I don't know that they're actually going to let you stream to other places like Hitbox or YouTube in the future. So you're pretty much locked in at Twitch for the moment. But the basic rule for Twitch encoding is your quality you could probably go with high quality and just go with one of these basic presets. If your stream... Now, here's a here's a note for you guys and gals. Um, if your stream is stuttering or lagging or not showing up when you boot up the Twitch page, then your, your uh, internet connection probably just isn't stable enough to handle, like, a high preset. So dial it back to medium, and if it's still a problem, you could try dialing it back to low. But if you're under 480p quality, you're probably not really able to stream, so you probably don't want to do that. Just just noting that. But again, I'm a guy that likes to handle custom um, presets for quality control. So the highest you can go is 720p at 60 FPS right now. They don't have the ability to churn out 1080p. I'm guessing it's because the encoder for this program isn't very efficient yet. But um, the max bitrate that Twitch wants you to use is 3.5k, um, kill, you know, 3.5k kilobytes per second. And that's because that's just the, the limit of their, um, their network. If everyone was streaming at a max of 6k, or what is it, this goes up to 5k. If everyone was streaming at a max of 5k, it would absolutely just destroy their system. However, it is not against their terms of service to stream at 5k. So if your internet can handle that, I'd suggest doing so. Um, 6K is the limit that they put out there for people beyond 6K kilobits per second or 6 megabits per second. Um, that's when they start to get mad at you and they might shut down your Twitch account. So if you use another program for this, just keep that in mind. But my recommendation is also their recommendation, which is 3.5K kilobits per second. And that's pretty good right there. Uh, yeah, I'm still kind of, I'm still a little miffed that they don't let you do 1080p, though. It seems kind of lazy. You can't even switch it to 1080p if you turn it down to 30 FPS, either. So, I'd maybe do, like, 3.5 or 4K for 60 FPS. Maybe even bump it up to uh, 5K if your internet can handle it for upload speed. And then you can just click the hotkey and you're good to go once you're inside of a game. But just to show you guys how all of this works, I'm gonna set it back to manual. And then I'm going to minimize this other window, open up Steam. And just because I've got it installed from a review yesterday, I'm going to open up lovely weather we're having in a 1080p windowed window. And we're going to mess around with this and see how it performs when we start messing around with it. So lovely weather we're having. It's, a, it's kind of like a walking simulator with this weird character with a weirdly bulbous head. We can move around here. And then let's turn on our shadow play with alt, what was it, F9, I believe it was. And there it is recording, and it's probably, it looks like uh, my webcam is turned on, so you'll probably be able to see me in the preview. My hair is kind of all wa wacky and crazy today, so there you have it. We're gonna go, we're gonna run around a little bit. Um, I don't think I can see my FPS counter right now, but I know this game gets like 120 frames per second when we are um, messing around with it, so that's not really a problem. This isn't exactly breaking the bank on the graphics fidelity. Um, I'll just run down here. There's like a there's like a forest full of rocks and junk over there. And somewhere is um, Party Pig. Where are you, Party Pig? Hey, it's Party Pig. He floats around and he has parties in this kind of like pink yogurt stuff. So I'm gonna, that's it for this one. We're gonna turn off the rec Recording. And now it's saving the file, and we're actually going to jump out of here and minimize Steam again, and we're going to use our little shadow play window, and we're going to open up the folder where all of our videos are kept, and it usually saves them... Um, where did it save it? 
Didn't say, did it save? Oh, it saved a desktop recording. Okay. So that counted as a desktop recording when I did it in windowed mode. So let's open this sucker up. See what she sounds like. So these black bars are just, oh, there you go. You can see my face, my delicious chupacabra self. Um, yeah, I definitely have not combed my hair at all today, but here's the, the camera. It's pretty big. I might actually have to zoom that in a bit. I'm just using the default one on the laptop, which isn't great. But you can see it's beautiful 60 frames per second, 1080p, and that's all that there is to recording with Shadowplay. There isn't a lot of fanciness to it at all. Isn't that just spiffy? So yeah, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you use the NVIDIA GeForce Experience and NVIDIA Shadowplay in order to get started recording all of your stuff today. And I will catch you guys and gals next time. Let me know if you have any questions, if anything in that's covered in this is confusing or anything. And I'm sure I could help you to the best of my abilities, but um, this is sort of a program that either works or it doesn't. So there's not a lot of fiddling and twiddling that I can help you with to try and get it working. Um, unlike programs like OBS, which you can usually perform some sort of ancient dark ritual and it'll start working that way. So yeah, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this gave if this helped you out. There's some other recording tutorials running around, including some on my gaming channel for how to use both versions of OBS. And I'll catch you guys and gals next time. Toodles, everybody, and have a good one.